this is the greatest opportunity in the history of the world. It's also the worst time in world history. Mm -hmm. But what you do with it is up to you. But the reason is we believe in teaching people to fish. Mm -hmm. Our school system teaches you to give people fish. And there's 20% of the population, it's the 80-20 rule, it's called Prado's Law. 80% versus 20%. So 80% of the people need to learn how to fish. 20% need to be given fish. The problem is what Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and all these socialists and communists are saying, they're good people. I agree with them. But the number of people who need to be given fish only increases. Yeah. So you can listen to the school teachers who say that we should take care of the poor, and we should, but not by giving them money. We'll never learn that way, and the problem will just keep growing and growing. Yeah. Another one of my heroes is this guy, Jordan Peterson, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The school teachers hate him, and he's a school teacher. <laughs> he's, a, he's a professor at Harvard and I think Toronto in Canada. Mm -hmm. He said something very, very profound the other day. He says, when these guys talk about what we stand for is taking care of the homeless and the poor, he says, that's not what they stand for. This guy, Jordan Peterson, is brilliant, man. He's at three, he started writing a book a day, and, and the school teachers are attacking him and everything, because he's a school teacher. So he says, it's not what that person stands for. It's not that Bernie Sanders stands for free medical education. What Bernie stands for, and Warren, and all those socialists stand for, is they're against the rich. You know, so they say, yeah, I'm for the poor, but they're really against the rich. And that really bugs me. So that's what Jordan Peterson is saying. That's where the school teachers attack him. And what I'm for is teaching people to fish. That's why we have the cash flow game. That's why I have these books and all this. You know, Kenny McElroy, my real estate guy, was his just here. And this market is gonna come down. It's gonna be the biggest mm -hmm. crash in world history because pensions are the biggest problem in the world. I called it in here back in 19, 2002 or something, I forget the date. It was supposed to crash in 2016 until Trump got elected and quantitative easing. Now they kept printing. So they're blaming Trump right now. It's not Trump. It's our school system. We're still teaching people to work for money and give poor people money. And there's 20% that needs to be given money. But the rest of you can do something. At the end of the day, no one can save us when, when the worst comes to hit, right? And so it's the only thing we can actually do, and like you said, invest in, is our financial education yep. to be able to save ourselves from this Correct. disaster. And this doesn't cost a college education. You don't have to take all the student loan debt. Yeah. And you can teach 100 people with it. And mm -hmm. you can have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Or you can go to school and listen to a communist. That's what I'm saying. Most of these school teachers come from the communist point of view, which is we got to give people fish. That's modern monetary theory, MMT, Marxist money theory. That's Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. I don't disagree with them. I feel for the poor, but I don't think we should give them fish. We should teach them to fish, and that's the difference. And they're not for the poor, they're against the rich. It's a very big difference. Now, as we say in this book, the biggest crooks are on Wall Street. They are the biggest banks. They're J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Wall Street. But that's not capitalism, mm -hmm. that's criminal. Corruption. Corruption. So that's why we, we're here at Rich Dad. The last thing I want to say is this. It's the biggest opportunity in the history of the world. This crash is going to be so big. I look at that red board again. I don't think any more quantitative easing can stand start it. If, even if they solve the coronavirus crisis, it's still going to crash. Yeah. Right? So, so, and that's, that's something I wanted to ask you too. The media makes it seem like, okay, Trump's to blame or the coronavirus is to blame. It's the school teachers that are blaming. Mm -hmm. They're communists. And we saw this. I mean, you've been saying for a while Long now, time. it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit, it's going to hit, it's going to hit. And now they just take advantage of an opportunity to blame it on something. And I'm not against school teachers. It's their financial philosophy. My whole family are school teachers. <laughs> they tell me the same thing. They tell me the same thing. I said, <laughs> when are you going to get a job? I said, I don't want a job. I don't want a pension, and I don't want a pay paycheck. 
So let me just say this, you know, people say, what can I do? Well, everybody can go out and buy silver right now. Mm -hmm. Silver price went down today. Yeah. It's good news. It's less than 20 bucks. Everybody in the world can afford 20 bucks. But again, out of 100, only two might buy silver. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, am, what am I investing in? I'm still in real estate. You know why? Interest rates are so low. The housing prices are high. That's why there's a bubble in property. But I'm building old age homes right now, old, you know, called senior living for me. As Kim says, you know, she's, she's reserved the penthouse for me. <laughs> it's a big market. In, in 2020 to 2030, there'll be two billion old guys like me turning 65. Yeah. Two billion all over the world. So there's more opportunity. You can buy silver, 20 bucks. Everybody can do it. Two out of 100 might do it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they don't, they're lazy. I'm, I'm building, you know, I'm, I'm borrowing more money to build this assisted living property right on Camelback and 32nd Street. The other thing too, I'm investing in my friend's school. Now, why I'm investing in school? One reason, you know, it's because he's gonna buy the real estate for the school. I'm a real estate guy. But where does his money come from? It comes from the government. Because of the laws of America, every child must have an education. So every school is funded by the federal government and the state government. So my source of funds is really, really strong when I invest in a school. So I'm still investing. I'm just not investing in a 401k, ETFs, mutual funds, or I don't want a pension. Those are the differences. Mm -hmm. So there's more opportunity than ever before, but not if you went to school. That's the problem. Get together with two to five friends, play the cash flow game, support, study, discuss, yeah. and you'll get smarter. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm honored, uh, and I especially want to talk to the younger people, who, like especially the millennials, which are in charge of millennial money. And the reason for that is, although you guys have got a lot of <clears throat> real education yet to go, at least you're more aware of what's going on in the world, you know, due to YouTube and the the internet and all this stuff, you're, you're much more aware than my generation. Mm -hmm. So the baby boom generation uh, was 1946 to I think 1974 or something like that, whatever it was. But the baby boom generation had it really easy. And that's the problem. And so in it, when it comes to real education, it's like, you know, you spent, so the boomers have spent all their lives learning how to use their right hand. And now, they know something is changing, but they can't change. So it's like saying, I'm going from my right hand, I'm gonna to have to learn how to eat with my left hand now. And so what happens is the brain gets kind of locked into a mode. And then you have to kind of relearn everything again because learning is really physical. It's not just mental like they have in school. So like if I wanted to learn, <clears throat> let's, I'm, I'm fourth generation Japanese and I don't speak Japanese at all, man, you know, because I spent 74 years speaking English. If I have to learn to speak Japanese, I'm in big trouble. 